Hello everyone and welcome to Talking Geeks. This is our fifth edition, actually it's the second edition in English. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we had Zina, we've been talking about digital transformation and multimedia translation. Today I'm pleased to have Lars, which is a crypto lawyer and a fintech expert, but most importantly, he is the Lexify founder. So uh, now I'm going to leave uh, Lars introducing himself. So Lars, hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Hello, hello. So Lars, uh, I want to I wanna start straight away. Lexify, what is Lexify? Well, Lexify is a, is a new company that we have established last month here in Switzerland, which has the scope to give uh, um, professional advice to all the people which want to tokenize an asset, issue a security token, use NFT for their business. So we are a group of consultants, which uh, I will say important experience in the blockchain field and uh, in the legal field and in the blockchain field. And we want to bring this experience to our clients. Awesome, fantastic. So uh, you mentioned a couple of areas that Geeks Academy is, uh, is touching. Because uh, for those who don't know uh, Geeks Academy, uh, we are an international network for digital talents. We provide uh, courses in uh, AI and big data, uh, blockchain encodings and the security and cloud, metaverse and gaming. So you've been talking about uh, consulting clients for uh, uh, NFTs, so tokenization. So digital asset tokenization can uh, be applied to different industries, such as, as you said, metaverse, or uh, it can be uh, blockchain as well. So why, why uh, the digital asset tokenization today in the current digital transformation we are uh, living in is important? Well, I think it's important for, for many factors. Um, first of all, um, I think the, the main impact that digitalization of the asset will have is on the payment system. Um, we are seeing with Bitcoin, we are seeing it with stable coins. Uh, we have now a way that where we can use a mean of payment uh, without the intermediation of third parties. And that is important. Um, I have clients, even here in Switzerland, um, which have eventually difficulties to open a banking account, difficulties to set up a, a, a startup because the banks don't want to work with startups. They want probably to work with companies which are a little bit more mature. And we can, through payment token, establish the company with cryptocurrency, with stablecoin. And then we can really start and executing some business. Then we have companies which are already mature that are in this business since years. And they can use digital assets to increase the relationship between themselves and their clients. And here I'm speaking and thinking about NFT, for example, or governance tokens. So through digital assets, we can in create a new way of interact between ourselves, with, with our clients, with our user, user, between friends. And I think the only limit is imagination. That is what um, the digital asset allow us to do, to a, really a lot of things. And I have seen, I mean, I remember when I started, we were just issuing tokens which were representing, a, that was the, the famous utility token, so tokens which were just representing the use of a, of a platform. Now we have token which can be the ticket for entering in, in an event, uh, can be your representing me as a person, so my digital identity. We can have security tokens. I think we will speak about this later. We can have NFTs, which represent uh, arts object. Uh, we can have plenty of way how to use token and increase this interaction with, with the people. So I think the tokens is the missing element in the digitalization where 
and and then they explain very well the passage from web 2 to web 3 so web 3 2 we could i could write but in web 3 i can really transfer assets transfer something between the user and that's amazing honestly yeah i perfectly agree with you so um you mentioned you mentioned a lot of stuff so basically we got underneath the blockchain technology which is the uh, i can say the engine of everything so and then uh, to create uh, those digital assets uh, or nfts uh, you need to uh, work with smart contracts as well for example so there's a lot of technical stuff which is uh, going on uh, behind the scene let's say uh, so I want to just uh, read with you um, a news which I found uh, today. So uh, basically, the estimated growth rate uh, of the um, security tokens market cap in 2021 increased compared to the previous year, 2020, by 500%. And we, we don't even imagine what 500% increase means. So uh, uh, in simple words, there's just a lot of demand and uh, use cases, as you mentioned before, uh, for digital asset tokenization and, and NFTs as well. And I just want to, uh, would like to know uh, your opinion uh, so about the high demand of a professional profile uh, in, in your industry. Yeah. Maybe let me comment the, this, this news that you have showed to everybody which goes in the direction of your question. Um, the incredible increase that we see here is due to the fact that the market for security token right now, I will say, is next to zero. It's very, very, very low. So when you have a very low market, it's easy that you have incredible increases in percentage. The reality, however, is that I believe that in the next years, let's say in the next 10 to 20 years, we will have a massive swift of all the financial products that now are in the traditional market. So think at all the shares, all the bonds, all the funds, all the uh, certificate, all the structured products, everything will um, will we, we'll swift from the traditional infrastructure to blockchain infrastructure and that will be huge so it is an increase in 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 in, in volume etc that we see here it will be immense but why it's not that we are just creating new token no it's just the apple share which now you can handle it and, and, and trade it on a traditional stock exchange in the future you will trade it on a stock exchange on the blockchain. It will be a security token. And that will be for every financial instrument. So I think that in the next years, we will really see this increase in use of blockchain technology for financial uh, instrument. Uh, there are many reasons for that. Um, there are regulatory reasons. If I use a blockchain, which is almost impossible to cheat on it, um, I have more assurance that there will be less cheater. Of course, there will always be people which will try to, to scam you and to, to decade your token and so on, like in the traditional finance. But you cannot have the person inside the stock exchange or the person inside the bank which purchase the, uh, the, the does something on the system so that he gain money, you don't gain and, and you lost money. That's not possible with, with blockchain. And that is something that the regulators uh, love about uh, blockchain. Um, then there is also the idea of the, uh, the decentralization of the smart contracts that we can use inside um, those platforms. And that's also is creating, is making everything faster um, and, and, you, and, and you need less people to, to, to do this, this job. So let's be honest, uh, uh, this, uh, this, in this technology revo technological revolution will also allow us to run complicated platform with less people and less efforts if, if we compare it to the traditional one where we have, I mean, a lot of people working on bank, banks and on stock exchange. So there will be, I think, a lot of demand for, for this new kind of, 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 
of instruments or for set issuing security token, for managing a security token platform. Uh, I think that the future there is bright. So we're just at the beginning. We will have a little bit of problem of, of, of the beginning, of course, because we have to educate everybody to use this system. But once the, 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 the people out there will be educated, I mean, there will be an immense growth. Exactly, exactly. I agree with your point. So uh, I was just wondering, just to put everything like um, pen to paper, uh, let's, let's give uh, our listeners some, uh, some use cases because uh, I'll just, just, just one uh, brought up to my mind. For example, uh, today uh, we always talk about metaverse, for example, and I think about uh, all those uh, popular metaverse such as uh, the central land or the sandbox, for example, uh, where you can basically uh, buy a land, for example. So, um, in case of digital assets tokenization, we can, and uh, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, we can, like, instead of uh, need to buy the whole uh, land, we can uh, actually fractionalize it, so make small parts of it, and then buy it. So actually, we can all of us afford to buy a land in the metaverse. Am I right or not? Let's say that your example. I think that your example make more sense if we go in the in the real world. Because in the tradition, in the metaverse, okay, there are lands which are very expensive, but you still afford to buy land for, for, for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense right now to, to fractionize a, a, a metaverse land. Maybe in the future, yes. Yeah, However, I'm always, I mean, I'm always thinking at yeah. the end of time. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, your, your idea is correct. So what we are leaving now is this idea of fractionalize some assets. So, for example, I have a, a, a case, a client who is issuing um, tokens which represent luxury watches. And if you don't have, I don't know, $100,000 to purchase a luxury watches, but you want to have a piece of a luxury watches, so you can, by fractionalizing the, 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 the watches uh, with token, you can just purchase a, a small part of this watch for, for, le for, for less money. So you can really be a co-owner of uh, luxus watches. Uh, we are using the same process for, for arts, for example. So another project that we have, we want to virtually cut a, a, a famous painting so that you can own a small portion of this um, uh, painting, for example. Or then the big, the big question is real estate. Uh, there are a lot of projects who want to tokenize real estate. That is maybe a little bit the, the, the more difficult part. That tokenizing real estate is still complicated because there are some procedures that you have to follow uh, depending on where you are. And sometimes these procedures are off-chain and being off-chain make, make it quite difficult for you to create a token which can really all of you when you sell the token to also sell the, 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 the real estate. That's so, crazy. Sorry for interrupting. Just, just to clarify to those who don't know what off-chain and on-chain means, what, what do you mean with that? So oh, um, off-chain is something that I can do on the blockchain. So if I transfer a token to you, that is something that we can do on the blockchain. And that's on-chain. And off-chain is everything which is outside the blockchain, which is not recorded on the blockchain. So, for example, for the real estate, if in Switzerland, if I want to purchase a real estate, I have to go to the notary and I have to do a registration at the uh, real estate register. So that is all operation that are off chain because, hey, it's, 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 it's still, it will be, but it's still not on the blockchain. The day we put the, the, the land register on the blockchain, Okay, then we have also the land register on chain. Then it's really easier to issue a token which represents the land, and they can send the sell the land by transferring the token. And then it's also easier to to fractionalize this token and to fractionalize the land. Perfect, perfect. So uh, sorry if I interrupted you. Perhaps you were ah, doing worry. somewhere else. It was it was just it was just to um, clarify for 
those who, who are watching or are going to watch the uh, this edition. So sometimes there's people uh, like very young students asking us or uh, for uh, courses in uh, perhaps metaverse or blockchain or coding and and um, we receive like requests for stuff that we actually uh, yeah. think for granted because daily we talk about blockchain or metaverse or cyber security but sometimes uh, i'll try to explain as much as possible all the concepts uh, to make people understand so i just want to uh, ask you just in a couple of minutes um, some other examples of uh, security tokens or uh, nft do we have uh, anything uh, any other examples uh, look i think security tokens is something very interesting but it's not so innovative because we will just tokenize something which already exists as i was saying before shares bond etc uh, i think much more interesting is the use of other kind of token like nfts um, for example one project that attract me a lot is the digital identity and you can think nft are non-fungible tokens so i can create a token which represent myself in the digital world and that is something that can be very useful because if I have a sort of digital identity in the form of a token, I can then use this digital identity to make different kind of activity. So think about uh, opening a banking account with just sending to the bank the token which all of the bank to collect information about my, my, myself, for example. And so I can open the banking account with just one click or um, going to the, the, the the voting, voting with, uh, with, uh, with tokens. So the DAO token, that is something that we are using in, in, in DAO protocol. But honestly, we can use the same process inside an election. So for executing an election without any possibility to, um, uh, to, to fake the election. So think in all these uh, countries that are in the world which do fake election and then say, oh, I won and that's not true. If we use blockchain to organize election, they, these, these guys can no more uh, come out and, and say that they won the election because everybody will be able to see what, what were the vote um, expresses during the election. Or, uh, I mean, and if we go to this direction and we think about decentralization, uh, now we are discussing a lot about the new decentralized social network, so Nostra and, and all the kind of application. And even if this doesn't have a token, think about the influence that this may have. I mean, with those applications, there is no censorship. You cannot, you cannot stop what you, you say on this, on, this, on this social network. So think about China, where you, we will have a social network open to Chinese people to even yeah. speak bad about the, the Communist Party, and China cannot stop this. So the, 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 the effect that they, that could, be, could have on, on our society can, can really be incredible and immense. So I'm quite excited to see what will happen in the next year. Yes, we all are excited. So uh, just to wrap it up, because uh, I usually ask for a final thought uh, for uh, all the students which are just approaching the uh new world of uh, uh these future jobs that we that are growing uh today and uh we received uh actually um a question from uh, a linkedin user which is saying how to join this world do we need uh, do i need to be a developer or can i just have some basic knowledge of crypto and blockchain so as i as i as i told you before we, we daily receive those kind of questions. So uh, I, I just want to wrap it up with your opinion uh, about telling to these young students that he does not have to fear, you know, uh, the technical stuff that he has to learn because there's a lot of demand. It sounds scary at first, but it is actually not. So 
uh, I've already answered. Sorry, but now I want to now I want to know I want to know your your opinion as well. But look to to answer the question. I am a lawyer, so I'm not a developer. So you see that you don't need to be a developer to be inside this 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 world. Um, of course, if you are a developer, it's easier because you can uh, work on the smart contract. But uh, I mean, you need uh, lawyers, you need accounting. There are a lot of accountants that, that don't know how to do accounting with tokens. So accountant, taxation, uh, tax expert, how to tax uh, the different use of the token. Um, think about all the marketing uh, uh, also uh, is something very important in our world. So how, how can you do marketing in a, in a metaverse? There is plenty of um, activity that you can do in, 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 in this world. You just keep what, you're, what you like to do and bring it into this world. Um, maybe what I say to all the students that come to me, I have a lot of students which want to make interview with me to, to understand what is, what is a blockchain world, what are cryptocurrency. And uh, when we start the interview, I stop them and I always ask them a first question. I told them, what wallet are you using? Which, which cryptocurrency are you holding? And many of them tell me, oh, I don't have a wallet. And so I told them, to them but how can you want to, work, to do a work paper about cryptocurrency if you even haven't opened a wallet? I mean, that's for free. You don't have to fear to open a wallet. And it would also be good if you invest, I don't know, Twenty dollars to buy some Ethereum, some Bitcoin. I don't know what to just experience uh, a custody. I remember when I jump in in this world, I I, I received from a friend uh, one dollar in Bitcoin. No, he sent me one dollar, and what I did. So he, he showed me how to open a wallet. And when I was at home, then I I I really take the, the iPhone of my wife. She goes in bed. I take his, my her iPhone. I open a wallet for, on her iPhone and then I transfer this dollar in Bitcoin from my wallet to the wallet of my wife to see how it works. And I remember being there waiting for the transaction to happen and say, What's, why is it not happening? Why is it not happening? Why is it not happening? And then when it happens, I receive only 90 cents and only one dollar in Bitcoin. I was saying, what's going on? Who gets? Yeah. Someone stole my Bitcoin. And that's how <laughs> I, I learned that there are fees when you do transaction on the, on the blockchain. So it's, it must be a learn by doing process, honestly. Just do it. Exactly. Just learn by doing, just do it. Um, there is no turning back when, uh, since when, you, when you get into this world of te new technologies, there's no turning back, actually. So, Lars, uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it was my pleasure. Thank you, thank you everyone who's been watching or who, uh, anyone who's going to watch uh, later on uh, on our uh, social media. Uh, I just want to remind everyone uh, to follow our social uh, media. We are on Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, everywhere. We are, we are everywhere. So uh, thank you so much once again, Lars. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. And uh, as we say here in Geeks Academy, stay geek. Hi, everybody.